this procedure, you will need a hammer, a flat tip screwdriver, a 3 30 seconds punch, a 5 16 punch, a chisel, a governor holding fixture, a 1 8 inch drill bit, needle nose pliers, and a bench vise. Here's the governor gear kit. It consists of a new governor gear, a new roll pin, and two finishing nails. The finishing nails are used as the hinge for the governor weights. Seeing how we don't need to remove these governor weights at this point in time, feel free to use these finishing nails for home repair. Place the holding fixture in the vise. Insert the governor, place the roll pin upright, take your hammer and punch, and drive the roll pin all the way through. With the roll pin removed, take a flat tip screwdriver, hit it smartly until the gear is removed from the governor. With the gear removed, open the weights and dump the valve. Here's the valve. There's an orifice right here. Pay close attention to this when cleaning the valve. Once you've thoroughly cleaned the governor and the valve with solvent and or brake clean, take another close look at the valve, specifically the orifice. Place a blow gun in the hollow end of the valve. Blow air through it. Air should shoot out of the orifice if it's free of debris. With the governor sitting upright on the bench, the weights should naturally open. Take your valve with the hollow end up and place it into the bore. It should fall right in all the way. Upside down with the weights open, it should fall right out as well, like so. Put the valve back in one last time, once again with the hollow end up. It drops all the way to the bottom. We're going to take a look at the valve movement while moving these weights back and forth like so. We're going to look in this window right here. While moving the governor weight in and out, the valve should move freely. If the valve won't fall out with gravity's assistance, then open the weights like so. Take a small pocket screwdriver and you're going to get behind the valve and you're going to gently push it outward like so. With the valve moving freely, I'm now ready to install the governor gear. Before installing the governor gear, take a close look at the cut of the gear. The Turbo 400 has the gears cut like so. Other GM transmissions have the gear cut in the opposite direction. As one can imagine, it's very easy to accidentally install the wrong gear. If you are attempting to install the governor into the case, and it will not go in all the way, you probably have the wrong gear installed. When installing the governor gear, you may find it tempting to use a press or even a bench vise. Using a press or a bench vise can damage this portion of the governor. Damaging this portion of the governor can result in end play problems. I just placed the governor right on my lap, take a hammer, and I'm going to hammer the gear all the way on.
like so. Make sure the gear is flush with the governor housing and that your valve is still free. Place the governor in the holding fixture and drill a hole here. Now hold the roll pin with some needle nose pliers, set it right on top of the bore, and hammer it in. Use a punch to finish the job. Take the 3 30 seconds punch and push the roll pin below flush. The pin is now below flush on both sides. When taking a closer look, we can see the witness marks on both sides of the bore where it was previously staked. This is done in an attempt to keep the roll pin from coming out of the bore during transmission operation. Take a chisel and center it right over the bore. Now hit it smartly until you have metal protruding into the bore like so. Repeat the procedure on the other side.